let's just get this out of the way first before some smartass comes and accuses me of not knowing what I'm talking about. I love Captain Harlock, I really like Queen Emeraldus, and I think Galaxy Express 999 is a damn fine piece of media for its age. But I have a lot of trouble reconciling the fact that Gun Frontier is part of that media arc. Because it sucks. And I'll lay out why in a minute, but I need to get my usual explanation of what we're looking at here before I savage it. But then that's what y'all watch the show for, isn't it? So, for starters, this was originally written in 1978, so it has some age to it, but that doesn't excuse a lot of the things that go wrong with the show version, which was made in 2002. I haven't read said manga version, and I really don't want to. I don't know if it holds up better than this, but <laughs> I, I just don't want to find out. So, forget everything you know about Harlock, Emeraldus, Cosmo Warrior Zero, or any other Matsumoto-verse works that you may have seen, because the show only bears a passing resemblance to any of them. Yes, the main characters are Harlock and Tochiro, but they're not the same characters at all. Rather, they're in a pair of amoral vagabonds on a mission that doesn't really have an explanation at the outset. And let me tell you, it's really hard to invest yourself in a show when it's packed to the brim with complete assholes. I'll break this down quickly for you so I don't get too hung up on plot stuff. In the Old West, Harlock and Tochiro meet up with this girl named Sinonora, who's just there to take her clothes off and get captured while being cryptic. They embark on a journey to search for a lost village of Japanese people, and constantly get into scrambles with a bunch of jerks. But it's okay, because they just murder their way through anybody who comes across their crosshairs. Harlock is a gunslinger, Tochiro is a samurai, and Sinonora apparently never met a garment she couldn't be stripped out of in two seconds flat. But it's okay, because Gun Frontier is a place where real men can be real manly and gather some shit, I don't know. It's this kind of toxic bullshit that lineates through the entirety of the series, but I don't really think Gun Frontier merits the kind of brain power it would take to really get into that. Now, it's been a minute since I watched the original Captain Harlock, but I feel like they didn't mess around with this sort of thing very much in that, and it stands up against the test of time better for it. Especially considering Kei Yuki was a woman and a badass in her own right, Emeraldus also wasn't a vehicle to get some boobies in the show. Even for what little fan service, if you could even call it that, that Maytel had, she was her own character outside of her figure. Sinonora is just an excuse to get the guys into trouble and cocktease them over and over again. She strips down or gets stripped down at least once an episode, and it's really, really cringy. Do better, ya hacks. Well, here I am with my tits out again. Jeez, you think they'd get tired of it by now. So here's the big problem. Harlock in his usual form is someone you can generally rely on to act in a certain way that lines up with his own morality as presented by the series. He is a rebel, a fighter, and a loner, but even if you can't trust his judgment, you can trust that what he's doing is in step with his own morality. Tochiro, for what little he ever showed up in Harlock's stories in the outset, was pretty much in the same vein. Now here, hop along Harlock, barely has any consideration for human life, seeming only to have the slightest glint of remorse over gunning down people in cold blood. When the real Harlock kills, it's typically because he got drawn on by Mazone, in the original series at least, or because he's defending his crew. That's what Harlock is about as a character. He cares about his crew first, freedom second, and God help you if you threaten either one of those. It's even in his theme song for crying out loud. And this apathy towards human life extends to the rest of the characters too. I don't know, maybe I was just ruined by Vash the Stampede when it came to westerns? Who's to say? Guys, I'm sitting here editing, and let me tell you, i it's actually been really hard for me to work on this video, because I don't want to think, slash, talk, or otherwise do anything with Gun Frontier anymore, and I keep having to go back to other better works and look at those instead, and it makes me just want to keep not thinking about Gun Frontier. Like... I mean, I know I have, like, a high tolerance for crap, but, oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really getting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, um, this is not a good thing to have as, like, a fidget device. This is really a bad idea. So the next problem stems from the way that the show is written. There is a main plot thread coming through, 
but it likes to divert and do these morality plays like Galaxy Express 3.9 did. But you can't have a morality play with characters that haven't got any fucking morality. And I'm not just ragging on these guys for being a couple of horn dogs. I'm saying this as people who just kill without stopping to catch their breath, and especially Sinonora, who may as well just have traitor written over her forehead. But the people who are in these series as these morality play characters are so completely arbitrary and abhuman, it's hard to even take them seriously. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't consider men under five foot two to be human, is a sentence spoken in this show without a second thought. I get it exists in this vague context of absurdism to make a point, but it's so absurd that it's actually just stupid. It is too far removed from something believable to perform the function it wants to perform. So when we come across this, it's not, oh, I understand the point they're trying to make, it's, that's stupid and arbitrary, and there is no moral instruction being received from this. The show is a real bonk on for sexual assault, too. It's fucking stomach churning, and I'll leave it at that. Because it's not worth dwelling on, because this show is already a pile of shit. It's kind of amazing how much they do just kill women straight out in this show. I understand characters having to be removed for the plot to progress at points, but it's all for Tochiro's man pain here, and it's so very transparent. And the problem with it all being directed so Tochiro can have man pain is that Tochiro is not a great character, or even one I really care about. I was kind of hoping Harlock would have more of a role, but he's just kind of there as a gunner who occasionally says something sage. He could probably be just replaced with a floating firearm and Sinonora with a sexy lamp. No, this show is centered around Tochiro, an odious little toad, and his search for the missing tribe of Japanese folk in the Wild West. And apparently the way this series thinks it can get the plot to the end of it is by killing one female character who shows up almost per episode. Now I'm generalizing here. Some of them have a twofer in them. But if they're not getting killed almost out the gate, they're taking off their clothes for the sake of sexiness, I guess. I don't know. I have the same issue with stuff like Game of Thrones, though. Like, oh, could you maybe do this scene with your clothing on? Because, you know, that'd be okay, too. No? Uh, all right, fine. I'll get your busters out. This show looks awful as well. It has all sorts of weird things crop up. This was made in 2002, so they're still trying to get their handle on that whole digital animation thing, and they really shouldn't have bothered. The character designs are the same kind of wonky stuff that Matsumoto usually has, which lends it a bit of charm. All the women look the same, Harlock is handsome, but pretty much everyone else has lumpy potatoes for heads, and even Tochiro looks like a freaking mutant. I don't know what species he's supposed to be, but he's clearly not human. And now, if there's one thing I can say for Leiji Matsumoto's work, it's that he has a lot of stories to tell. Unfortunately, he only has a few character designs to tell them with, so what are you going to do? When they call anime limited animation, sometimes they mean really limited. But... Hey, you know what? It's fine, because if it looked good, I'd be more irritated that it sucked so bad. Now, it's worth noting that sometimes I get accused by people I know and fairly well trust that I go into anime expecting to hate it, and that's only partially true. And I probably have a deserved reputation as someone who watches a lot of bad anime. But at the same point, I kind of went into this expecting to like it, because I like a lot of other Matsumoto works. This is hitting every button that I hate about anime. Pointless nudity, crass humor, and an overall lack of good taste suffuse this show, and it's not fun to watch. Thirteen episodes should not feel like work, but I felt like I was dragging my own entrails out every time I hit play. And you know, it really sucks to have to say this about a series that was worked on by such a venerable series creator like Matsumoto, but this show is just a junker. All the style and impact that other Legiverse works have are absolutely not present here. They just have the look. And while I can't speak for the manga, I'm not even going to look into it for fear of having to experience all this shit again. Just say no, kids. Go watch Galaxy Express 3.9 or the original Captain Harlock and appreciate what made these characters worth watching to begin with. Is it that hard to make a good Wild West anime after Trigon? Come on.